Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. Guys, I've got some very big news to share with you guys. PayPal is on the cusp of becoming a bank with their a Curve acquisition. In addition, we have a Norwegian company that has added Bitcoin to their balance sheet. The trend continues. And a crypto investment firm has raised $200 million to do what? Buy more Bitcoin and crypto. And Ripple and MoneyGram have updated their partnership. We're going to talk about it. Before we do, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, guys. Leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, don't forget to sign up for my free newsletter where I share crypto knowledge and insights. It's a free weekly newsletter, no spam. And my goal is to spread knowledge, guys. And I will give you guys updates on what I'm thinking about the market, uh, what cryptos I'm adding to my portfolio, who I'm interviewing next. So a lot of insights. And once again, it is free. So link in the description, sign up for the newsletter. It will be sent out weekly. So the market, Bitcoin, currently, let me actually refresh this. It is over 51, oh, 52,000. It's a good thing I refreshed there. <laughs> Moving upwards, guys, looking good. Ethereum back over $1,800. So we've been, of course, tracking Bitcoin's movement on this channel, looking at the correction phase as well as the consolidation phase. So it looks like we're breaking out to the upwards uh, here, maybe going to 75,000. And I say maybe because uh, we could still move a little bit sideways before we have a breakout. Maybe we have another week in this consolidation phase, right? But let's see what happens. Long story short, mac from a macro level, we are on track. And these hourly, weekly, daily charts, look, we look at it to get an idea of what may be coming next. But at the end of the day, they're irrelevant. What matters is the macro level trends. That's how you have to look at crypto, unless you're day trading, right? So we're going to break out. I think 75,000 is the next target. And I think we could see the likes of an Apple or Google or Facebook make an announcement of they put Bitcoin on their balance sheet. Now, Big news around PayPal, which is, of course, a 800-pound gorilla in the room, right? They have uh, purchased crypto custody firm Curve. Guys, this is big. We know they launched their crypto trading service last year, and they have over 350 million users in combination of PayPal and Venmo. And wait till it rolls out on Venmo, my friends. That's coming, I believe, around Q2. So the platform said it plans to complete the acquisition before the third quarter of 2021. So they're setting up once again to be a giant, an elephant in the room, right? So payments giant PayPal has acquired Israel-based crypto custody firm Curve for an undisclosed amount. According to the, uh, excuse me, according to PayPal, the firm purchased Curve as part of its initiative to support cryptocurrencies and digital assets. The platform said it plans to complete the acquisition before the third quarter of 2021, but did not disclose the purchase amount. Israel-based media outlet uh, calculus, if I'm saying that right, said last week Curve may have been sold for between 200 and 300 million dollars. With CNBC reporting today that uh, the deal is worth less than 200 million dollars, the acquisition of Curve is part of our effort to invest in the talent and technology to realize our vision for a more inclusive financial system. Guys, this is some of the most bullish news because. They started their efforts in crypto. They started seeing increase in activity and um, increase in revenue and more people being on the PayPal site and app and logging in more because of crypto, right? And now they see that and now they're adding better custody. And you can imagine they're exploring what other areas can we improve on when it comes to crypto so we can bring in more revenue. And Game Theory will tell you that other payment companies, credit card companies, and so on and so forth are going to see this and then they don't want to get left behind. Everybody wants to get as big of a share of the a slice of the pie, uh, so to speak, so they can make as much revenue as possible because, yes, we are still early in the adoption curve. The masses are not here yet. And I'm talking about mass FOMO. And, and uh, I think that might happen <laughs> possibly at Bitcoin. $100,000 plus, right? So very bullish news, guys. If you're holding crypto, this is what you want to see. Now, check this out. Norwegian investment firm allocates $58 million to Bitcoin and crypto ventures. Acre ASA has 
created a new subsidiary to hold Bitcoin on its balance sheet and invest in other companies in the crypto space. Very bullish, guys. MicroStrategy started this, and we saw Tesla. Uh, we got the folks at uh, the Motley Fool, and many other smaller and medium-sized companies are doing this. So, Ace, excuse me, Acre ASA, a six billion dollar Oslo Boers listed holding company, is set to begin investing in Bitcoin, according to a press release issued on Monday. Acre has created a new company called Seti AS. If I'm saying that right, or CTAS whose mission is to invest in Bitcoin. The newly formed CT will also delve into the Bitcoin mining arena while looking to forge useful partnerships with major players in the crypto space. Indeed, uh, CT has reportedly, reportedly entered into a collaborative agreement with Blockstream. Um, according to Blockstream Chief Strategy Officer Samson Mao, the Bitcoin infrastructure firm will work closely with CT on its Bitcoin mining and sidechain implementation pursuits. Guys, as I just stated, game theory would suggest their competitors and folks within their industry are going to look to make similar moves. So regardless of if you love or hate Bitcoin or if you're in your feelings about Bitcoin, the facts of the matter are... and. These are the facts I'm sharing here with you. Bitcoin is getting adoption. It is digital gold. It is gold 2.0. And companies are putting it on their balance sheet as a hedge against inflation. And they're also investing in the Bitcoin mining, as you can see here. And you're going to see a Bitcoin mining boom in the United States. We've already reported on states such as uh, Texas seeing really huge growth there, the world's largest Bitcoin mining farm being built there. In Kentucky, they're offering tax discounts to miners. Uh, the mayor of Miami is looking to do the same. So you will see this as a booming industry, guys, and jobs and revenue and tax taxes are going to be created out of this. So big things are ahead. That's why I have Bitcoin in my portfolio. I don't only have Bitcoin. I have Ethereum, XRP, and others. So check this out. Uh, Michael Saylor tweeted this out. This is big news from NYDIG. He he's, uh, tweeted the following. Institutional funds are now flowing into Bitcoin at an accelerated rate via private equity, public equity, public debt, direct purchases of the commodity and the commodity futures. Insurance firms have crossed $1 billion in exposure with NYDIG Bitcoin. So NYDIG raised uh, $200 million from strategic partners. And additional capital comes amid drastic acceleration of Bitcoin adoption via NYDIG, NYDIG from traditional financial service firms. So the money's pouring in. Um, it's going to Bitcoin primarily and then other cryptos as well. But I, I've stated many times, Bitcoin will be the entry point, the door to the rest of the market. And we know that uh, folks like Mass Mutual have bought Bitcoin, Guggenheim Fund and and many others. But so let me give you an idea of who's involved in this. Um, NYDIG, a leading provider of technology and investment solutions for Bitcoin, today announced $200 million growth capital round led by strategic partners, listen to this, Stone Ridge Holdings Group, Morgan Stanley, New York Life, the insurance company, Mass Mutual, the insurance company, Soros Fund uh, Management, and FS Investments, Bessemer Venture Partners, wow, that's a long name, and Fintech Collective, who led two prior funding rounds for NYDIG, were also significant participants. See what's happening here, my friends? Look at the list of those names. These folks are getting involved in Bitcoin and crypto. And when I tell you we are early, look at look at the timing of this, right? Even if you're buying Bitcoin at $50,000, you are still early. Now, you may say, dude, are you crazy, man? 50000 You would have been early if you bought it at $200 or 1000 Yeah, absolutely. But it's all relative to the growth, right? Um, you have to look at it from a macro level. Uh, if you're buying at $50,000, you are selling at sixty. dollars Okay, you're not, not really much. You're making a profit. But some people uh, and these companies like MicroStrategy and so forth are buying to hold for the next halving. And that's why I always tell you guys, look at this macro level. And here's some more bullish news around Bitcoin. A third Bitcoin ETF expected to launch in Canada this week. Guys, I interviewed Hester Pierce, commissioner of the SEC today. That interview should be live tomorrow. And um, we talk about that. How can the U.S. get in the position of being the lead here and not trailing behind? Because this is getting pretty crazy how many ETFs are getting approved in Canada and being listed on the stock exchange. 
So, man, I feel bad for the United States. You know, we're here and we don't have that clarity. So, according to an announcement from a provider, CI Global Asset Managers, Management, regulators have approved the final prospectus for the CI Galaxy Bitcoin ETF. The ETF is uh, expected to begin trading on the Toronto Stock Exchange on Tuesday tomorrow, subject to approval from the bourse uh, under the ticker BTCX. So this is uh, good news for the for the asset class because I always talk about Bitcoin being uh, and crypto being a global asset class. Anybody on any continent, any country can participate. You don't have to be an accredited investor. But it sucks that the largest capital market in the world, the United States, is is still deciding on when we approve this uh, my thing my, my, my hope is that you know this this year and my fingers are crossed on this that we we get this approval guys because this is getting out of hand the third in canada but the united states doesn't have one this is ridiculous but uh here's hoping for the best i think it will eventually happen and uh like i said you'll hester pierce weighed in on that she wants it but it's to get the rest of the sec commissioners on board now uh ripple and moneygram to wind down partnership so brad garlinghouse ceo of ripple tweeted a couple of things today guys he said today we're announcing that ripple and moneygram have this together decided to wind down our current partnership agreement and are both committed to revisiting it in the future see our full statement so you guys can read through that i, I think ripple did a lot of testing with moneygram and this, you know, obviously not great news. It's not what you want to see, but they are going to plan to revisit it. It's not like the, engage, the whole engagement's coming to an end. The relationship's come to an end. And I think, you know, the par pro part of the problem is this lawsuit from the SEC. That's probably why they're cooling things down because MoneyGram doesn't want to be associated with that, right? Uh, you think about their personal stock price and, and the company from a PR perspective. I could see why they want to cool their jets here. So, um... At the end of the day, Ripple's still doing a lot of great things worldwide. And of course, recently, the, the news of CBDCs potentially being built on the XRP ledger. I think some folks found uh, news information from a, an accounting firm in, in uh, Australia, if I'm not mistaken, that highlighted that the uh, French central bank is looking to uh, build their CBDC on the XRP ledger and possibly Ethereum as well. Now, that's not confirmed. But they are looking into it, and we know Ripple um, has been pushing um, for the use case of uh, building CBDCs on the XRP ledger. So, so Brad, uh, in addition to to that statement, said while lack of crypto regulation framework has needlessly muddied the waters for the U.S. businesses and consumers, there's no denying that Ripple and MoneyGram have achieved have what Ripple and MoneyGram have achieved together. Billions of dollars have been sent and settled across borders through ODL. So talking about uh, on-demand liquidity. So that's, uh, you know, like I said, not great news, but I understand because of this lawsuit that MoneyGram is probably like, oh, okay, let's distance ourselves from this for the moment and we could come back later, uh, which makes sense. Now, surprisingly, and I've, I've been, I just emailed the folks at Ripple uh, Brad Garlinghouse did an interview with the folks at Axios uh, or HBO, and obviously I can't compete with HBO, but it seems Brad can maybe talk a bit now. So I'm trying to see if I can lock in that interview with Brad. I'm, I'm waiting for uh, the folks at Ripple to get back to me, but you know he he highlighted his interview with that uh, uh, with uh, this guy here, Dan Primack, if I'm saying his name right. Um, so. That's an interview you guys can check out as well, and I'll see when I, you know if I could potentially get Brad on the show. Uh, I am in contact with the folks at Ripple. They're they're trying to schedule something with David Schwartz with me, but of course I would love to hear from Brad as well. So stay tuned on that, my friends. Um, uh, as I've stated before, if you're holding XRP, it is a long-term hold because we have to figure out this situation. And uh, once again, my interview with Hester Pierce will I think shed some light on what may be upcoming for Ripple and XRP. And once again, that'll, that'll be up tomorrow. So guys, what do you think about this news? Very bullish news. Uh, leave your thoughts and comments below. Uh, I think PayPal is up to something big. And we're, once again, game theory would suggest you're gonna see other uh, companies do the same and follow suit to try to compete. So leave your thoughts, comments below, hit the thumbs up button, share this video, and I'll talk to you all later. Mm -hmm.